In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we honor St. Benedict, who is famous for his rule, called the father of Western monasticism because of this rule. And in that rule, he stresses humility. He talks about the 12 degrees of humility. And among them is the second degree where he says, Love not your own will, nor be pleased to fulfill your own desires. You know you've reached some level of humility when you're not loving your own will, nor pleased to fulfill your own desires. Around the turn of the 20th century, a famous occultist named Aleister Crowley, he went down to Egypt and he received a revelation that lasted for about three days. He said it was from his guardian angel. His angel was not from above. Well, in this revelation, which he called the book of the law, he summarized it as essentially this. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. So there's two rules here. We've got the rule of the devil given to Aleister Crowley, the book of the law. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. And then you've got St. Benedict and all the saints with him, and our Lord, of course, teaching them, love not your own will, nor be pleased to fulfill your own desires. This is an echo of the gospel. Our Lady said, Be it done to me according to thy word. St. David said in the Psalms, At the head of the book it is written that I should do thy will. Jesus said in the agony in the garden, Not my will be done, but thine. In the Our Father it says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's humility, doing the will of God, not our own. Now, St. Teresa of Jesus, the great Carmelite mystic and foundress, she stressed, in order to grow in prayer, it must be proportional to our humility, detachment, and love of neighbor. So, our prayer is proportional to our humility, our detachment, and our love of neighbor. You want to grow in prayer? Grow in humility. Grow in detachment. Grow in love of neighbor. And your prayer will increase. You will start to go through the mansions. But an easy way to remember humility, just what is it? How can we define it? Well, St. Teresa starts with truth. It must be about the truth. The truth about what? The truth about myself. So we can define Humility as knowing the truth about yourself and doing something about it. It's one thing to know the truth. It's another thing to actually go out and do something about it. Let's put it another way. A very simple definition of humility is this. Knowing your place and taking your place. Knowing your place and taking your place. I like to think here of Elizabeth of Hungary. St. Elizabeth, she was married to a margrave, an honorable man of the country, part of the monarchical system, and she had to fulfill her office. She had to know her place and take her place. So she had to put on all these royal robes and all these pearls and gems, and she found it very distasteful. But she knew her place, and she took her place. Now, in her humility... Underneath all those royal robes, she wore a hair shirt because she knew she was a miserable creature and that she needed God. And she didn't want to get carried away with all the soft garments. And then as soon as she was able, her husband passed away. She put on the third order garments of the Franciscans. She no longer had her place in the monarchical system of Hungary. And then we can also think of St. Thomas More. St. Thomas More, he'd always wear the regal garments of his office as chancellor of the realm, but underneath he wore a hair shirt. These are saints. They knew their place. They took their place. Now, St. Benedict comes to our aid here as well, that humility in the eighth degree 
is when a monk doth nothing but what is sanctioned by the common rule of the monastery and the examples of his elders. So we see that humility has a certain element of tradition, that we see our place according to the rule, according to tradition, according to what our elders have always done, and then we put ourselves in that place and we take it. We may not like it, but that's humility. You accept it and you do it. So humility, very simple definition. Knowing your place and taking your place. Now, St. Teresa also said, we must never leave the path of self-knowledge. In other words, we must never stop striving for humility. Well, how do I gain self-knowledge? Well, she wanted her daughters to always practice self-examinations, examinations of conscience. So at midday, they'd have at least five to ten minutes of pure quiet where they examine their conscience, and same at night before they go to bed. But how, how can we examine our conscience fruitfully? Oftentimes we find it hard to examine our conscience because there's so much going on we don't really know what to think about. Or we can go through one of those lists, but those get old too because they get to be routine. Here is an easy way to examine your conscience. Say to yourself, what was the best thing that happened to me today? What was the best thing that happened to me today? Well, I said Mass, and I said my prayers, and you start going down the list, and then things will jump out at you. Well, I didn't say them as well as I should have. I was kind of hasty at that spot. I made a mistake there. What was the best thing that happened to me today? When you do that, you'll start to see things. Then you say, okay, what was the worst thing that happened to me today? And then you can start looking through your day and, oh, that was pretty bad. Well, that was all right. And then you start looking through, well, that was probably worse than that one. So you start picking them out, all the things that you struggled with today. And now you've got a pretty good examination of conscience by the time you're done. What was the best thing that happened to me today? What was the worst thing that happened to me today? That's a way we can constantly stay on the path of self-knowledge and grow in humility. St. Benedict, pray for us that we will love humility. One thing I love about St. Benedict's rule is that he truly understands human nature. So in his rule, he's always got these little phrases like, to love fasting. Well, we don't like fasting. Well, pray to love fasting then. Learn to love. We don't like humility. Pray to love humility. St. Benedict, intercede for us that we will love humility, that we will never leave the path of self-knowledge, that we will grow in prayer, in proportion to our humility. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.